The U.S. Department of Defense has announced on, on April 23rd that VT Halter Marine was selected to build the next generation of heavy polar icebreakers in a contract worth up to $745 million. That the deal covers detailed design and construction of the U.S. Coast Guard Polar Security Cutter, formerly the Heavy Polar Icebreaker. The PSC program is a multi-year Department of Homeland Security Level 1 investment in a U.S. CG major system acquisition to acquire up to three multi-mission PSCs to recapitalize the United States Coast Guard's fleet of heavy icebreakers which have the PSC's mission will be to ensure continued access to both polar regions and support the country's this contract also includes options which if exercised would bring the cumulative value of this contract to 1.9 billion the heavy polar icebreakers will be capable of surface defense using removable weapons and will be capable of fitting with additional sensors and weapons. The ships will be equipped with surface and air search radars, will be capable of communications with our Department of Defense, Coast Guard, and National Science Foundation ships and aircraft. The new fleet of icebreakers will allow the United States Coast Guard to perform missions in the Arctic such as defense operations and readiness, defending U.S. sabotage and interests, national security activities and maritime safety, ports, waterways, and coastal security, research, search and rescue, and logistic support, vessel escort. Work is expected to be clean, completed by June 2024. If all options are exercised, work will continue through November 2027. Coast Guard doesn't need to build an icebreaker. The Coast Guard needs to build a Coast Guard cutter that can break ice. Well, Polar Star was my first tour of duty. I was a fresh ensign, brand new, right out of the Coast Guard Academy. Being my first tour of duty, the experience is etched indelibly in my memory. I remember the sound of the ice uh, scraping down the sides of the hull. It was like a fingernail scraping against a chalkboard. One of the reasons I asked to be assigned to Polar Star was I knew that they would experience tough engineering challenges. And, uh, and, I, and I knew that based upon the, the environment that Mother Nature would throw at them and the extremes of temperature, that anything they could break would break. The difference uh, now is that back when I was assigned on there, the ships uh, were relatively new. Now they are far older and the systems are tired and worn out. So one might ask, what is the Coast Guard doing about this aging icebreaker? And the answer is a lot. We've made great progress on our journey. What's really exciting about it is it's not just the Coast Guard. We have phenomenal support from the administration, the Capitol Hill, the department, and the U.S. Navy. In fact, we just released a formal request for proposals for a brand new icebreaker. The first installment that will recapitalize our nation's fleet of icebreakers. This is a huge milestone. It's an indication that our nation's resolve is firm and we're on track to build a new icebreaker. It's the largest and most technologically advanced polar icebreaker in the U.S. Coast Guard's fleet. The Cutter Healy is longer than a football field and has over 34,000 kilowatts of power at its disposal. The Healy is truly one of a kind in the Coast Guard. The icebreaker deploys exclusively to the Arctic, but that's not the only thing that makes the Healy unique. Its scientific research mission sets the Healy apart from all other seafaring missions. This makes the Healy an important strategic asset to conduct critical research. With thousands of square feet of lab space, lifting cranes, and the capability to house 50 scientists, it's perfectly outfitted for its mission. On this first scientific expedition of 2017, Chief Scientist Scott Tripp is part of the Coast Guard's research and development team. The Healy is a fantastic vessel for us to work from. It gets us right where we need to be to develop technologies that are specifically suited for the Arctic. Right here is a 3D printer is active right now and it's printing a couple things and we use this because in the Arctic there's no hardware store around the corner, there's no infrastructure at all, we can't even pull into shore with this boat. 
That means if the scientists need a part that doesn't have to be metal, they can simply print it. It's working out so well, the Coast Guard is looking to outfit every Coast Guard ship with a 3D printer fleet-wide. Autonomy is the name of the game for this particular mission. Using aerial and underwater drones, researchers are able to see what's going on wherever they're doing their research. The reason we're so interested in autonomy is because it is a force multiplier for the Coast Guard. Rather than sending two, three ships up, we can send one ship up, and if we've got this type of technology active out there, they can cover as much ground. It'll be cheaper, less people up there, and it works really well. Enter our first experimental piece of hardware. Simply called a mobile sensor platform, it's able to capture multiple video feeds and transmit them up to 70 miles away. We can put a multitude of uh, sensors on it, such as uh, you know, sensors for depth or sonar, uh, maybe a fluorimeter for oil detection. Placing one of these every 50 miles allows vast areas to be monitored and studied, whether counting marine mammals, looking for oil spills, or just checking for other ships. Another aspect of the Healy's research is how they work with other agencies. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA for short, is working to develop inexpensive technologies to collect precise readings researchers can use to improve weather prediction. So essentially what it does is it starts at the surface and dives down the water column using buoyancy uh, to control it. It has wings and a rudder that control pitch and roll and is designed to operate in shallow water, setting it apart from most other gliders engineered to work at much deeper depths. Not far away is a state-of-the-art oil skimmer. Because of the increasing uh, risk of uh, oil spill in the Arctic, we need a, speci a specific skimmer to tackle the problem, how to skim properly in an icy water while the ice patches can block the way of the convention on the skimmer. You can look around you, you've got cranes here, you've got an A-frame off the rear, two, two knuckle cranes, we've got winches everywhere. We spend most of our time out on this deck launching equipment, bringing it back in, launching small boats, running them out so that we can test our technologies. This is a great place to work from, and the unique part about it is it can get up into the ice, because we have things we have to do on the ice, under the ice, and around the ice. So we go right up there, we get right into the thick of it, and we really put our technologies to the test. These scientists and researchers, alongside the United States Coast Guard, armed with science, are making the world a cleaner, safer, and more predictable place to live. There's a lot that can go wrong once divers enter the world of oceans, and nobody knows that better than the U.S. Coast Guard. Back in 2006, unfortunately, a tragic accident took place up here in the Arctic where we lost two of our Coast Guard divers. Uh, after that accident happened, the Coast Guard took a pause and they took a, a hard look at our program. Eleven years later, Coast Guard divers, along with the Navy, are training on board the USS Healy with past experiences in mind. Sometimes the mission takes these divers far under the surface. The deeper they go, pressure builds, gases and tissues compress, and simply coming up too quickly can be deadly. Basically what's happening, there's a bubble somewhere in their body and it's doing some bad stuff to them. Uh, so by putting them inside the chamber, it's gonna take that bubble and shrink it on down and allow the bubble pass the proper way. This type of emergency is referred to as a diving casualty and that's exactly what the Coast Guard is simulating. There's only one truly safe way to treat a dive casualty, and that's with a decompression chamber, and it's a must for dive operations off the Healy. So the chamber system is meant to simulate putting the diver back at pressure. So taking that expanded gas bubble found in your body and shrinking it back down to size, breathing 100% oxygen and allowing reabsorption of that air gas into the tissues causing full relief. Down three, one, two, three. This chamber belongs to the Navy, which is why Navy divers are on board for this Coast Guard exercise. When it comes to dive operations, everyone has one thing in mind. Safety is paramount in everything that we do. Being in this platform, diving in the Arctic, as well as the Antarctic, where the exposures are way above our limitations, but that's why there's certain guidelines that we must follow. 
Two branches of the military, the U.S. Coast Guard and Navy divers working side by side in the Arctic, training for underwater missions by taking safety measures well before they ever break the surface.
Thank you. 